non-thermal pulse electrical field recellularization in the duodenum for type 2 diabetes mellitus. These are the equipment used for the purpose of this video. The duodenum is crucial in managing the metabolic response to ingested nutrients, ensuring efficient digestion and processing. This regulation results from interaction among the gut microbiome, duodenal mucosal cell types, and the gut's immune and enteric systems, often called the second brain. These elements maintain glucose homeostasis and control inflammation through gut immunity modulation. Thus, the duodenum is a potentially underexplored therapeutic target for type 2 diabetes mellitus. The integrative function of the duodenum in, in orchestrating the metabolic response are communicated to key metabolic organs through the vagal afferent nerves. This results in modulation of beta cell function in the pancreas, regulation of hepatic glucose production, and influencing glucose uptake in adipose tissue and peripheral muscle. In condition of excessive caloric intake, particularly from highly processed foods and carbohydrates, the duodenum machinery is subjected to chronic overload, leading to dysfunction at a threshold that is both genetically and epigenetically determined. This dysfunction manifests as inflammation, microbiome dysbiosis, and efficient metabolic signaling. Notably, this duodenal dysfunction and resultant inflammation systematically affects key metabolic organs, therefore exacerbating metabolic dysregulation and its associated macro and microvascular complications. In addition, the duodenum regulates iron homeostasis. Metabolic oxidative stress can elevate serum ferritin and alter iron absorption and deposition in metabolic organs, such as the liver, heart, and pancreas. Iron overload in the beta cells of the pancreas can exacerbate ex ox oxidative stress and promote amyloid deposition, leading to beta cell dysfunction and impaired insulin production, contributing to insulin insufficiency. Access to the duodenum via upper endoscopy is advantageous for evaluating and treating metabolic conditions. EGD is reliable and safe for duodenal assessment, tissue sampling, and targeted therapies. Advances in endoscopic imaging provide clear view of duodenum crypt and villus, revealing changes in the intestinal lining linked to metabolic disease. Thus, the duodenum is a promising target for treating type 2 diabetes and other metabolic or inflammatory disorders. In this video, we demonstrate the use of a high-definition endoscope with underwater magnification, a cap, narrowband imaging, and a near focus function to examine duodenal crypts. In a healthy, metabolically stable state, these crypts are uniformly sized and shaped appearing tubular with a consistent vascular core. We note an absence of chronic inflammation, such as hyperemia and crypt capillary expansion with minimal fat and chyle deposits. To summarize the duodenal crypts in states of metabolic health, we present the following imaging. The duodenum crypts and villus are regular and homogeneous. The vascular core within each crypt is uniform, maintaining a balanced halo to vascular core ratio. There are no signs of chronic inflammation, such as hyperemia, expanded crypt capillaries, or excessive fat and chyle deposits. Here we present findings highlighting alteration in the duodenal mucosa that is potentially associated with type 2 diabetes and obesity, introducing a novel concept termed diabetic duodenopathy. Diabetic duodenopathy is characterized by heterogeneity in the duodenal crypt morphology, a perceived haziness and diminished crypt halo, signs of chronic inflammation such as hyperemia, an expanded capillary network, accumulation of chyle and excess fat deposits within the duodenum. Due to the duodenum's thin and sensitive nature, Optimal regenerative therapies require specialized non-thermal energy modalities like electroporation or pulse electrical field. This advance in endoscopic technology uses ultra-short electrical bursts from a specialized generator and a flexible circuit 
This electrical field increases cell membrane permeability, leading to controlled cell death and regeneration with minimal necrosis and inflammation, preserving surrounding structures and the extracellular matrix. This keeps the scaffold intact for new cell growth, allowing any cellular structure within the electrical field to be targeted for regeneration. Compared to thermal ablation, the histological features of pulse electrical field include cellular lysis, followed by rapid healing via recellularization, preservation of tissue scaffolding, minimal inflammatory response, controlled depth with no effect on muscularis propria. The treatment offers uniform non-thermal ablation without the need for lifting agents, precise depth control, and enhanced regenerative capacity. The maximum cell lysis was observed at 24 hours and complete cell regeneration was seen by 14 days. Endoscopic resolarization by electroporation therapy reset is an innovative method using pulse electrical field to promote duodenal regeneration, targeting type 2 diabetes and metabolic diseases. This technique disrupts cell membrane in the duodenum, leading to cell death and subsequent regeneration. It begins just after the major papilla, treating six to eight segment, two centimeter each, by expanding a flexible circuit and applying the pulse electrical field. Temperature increases are minimal, emphasizing its non-thermal regenerative approach, aiming to restore the duodenum's metabolic balance and signaling. We present a video demonstrating the reset procedure in a diabetic patient. The patient is 68 years old with body mass index of 34, had type, type, type 2 diabetes for five years, with suboptimal control in his hemoglobin A1C at 8.4. Baseline, the patient was on two anti-diabetic medications, including TTP4 and SGL2 inhibitors. After identifying the major papilla and placement of a guide wire, a catheter is inserted over the guide wire. The flexible circuit is positioned approximately two centimeter distal to the ampulla of water. The circuit is then expanded to ensure adequate contact with the duodenal wall. Pulse electrical field therapy is initiated by transmitting electrical pulses through the electrodes located in the flexible circuit, targeting the duodenal wall. After the completion of therapy, the flexible circuit is collapsed and retracted into its housing. The device is then advanced distally allowing for the treatment of subsequent segments within the duodenum. Here, we demonstrate the optimal sequence of advancement of the flexible circuit for treatment of multiple segments of the duodenum. The previously treated area is well demarcated by the blanching effect seen with pulse electrical field. The flexible circuit and the endoscope are then advanced together in slow forward motion to treat subsequent segments of the duodenum. In total, about seven segments of the duodenum are treated to complete the procedure. A collage of still images display the regeneration casket within the duodenum following pulse electrical field treatment. The upper panel shows, showcases circumferential homogeneous blanching of the treated segment, with notably absence of gross coagulative necrosis, typically associated with thermal injury. One hour post-treatment, narrowband imaging reveals the ablation of the mucosal and submucosal layer. Four weeks post-procedure, endoscopy confirms complete healing, characterized by the resolution of the inflammatory changes associated with diabetic duodenopathy previously observed in this patient on narrowband imaging prior to the treatment. Reset procedure in this patient with type 2 diabetes that is poorly controlled on medical management has significantly improved glycemic control. The patient's hemoglobin A1C level dropped from 8.4 to 6.8 in 24 weeks, and continuous glucose monitoring showed improved time and range. This highlights the potential of this new treatment for managing type 2 diabetes. Conclusion This regenerative therapy complements medical diabetes management to optimize glycemic control, promote weight loss, reduce burden of hypoglycemia, and potentially decrease insulin use. It may also reduce inflammation, prevent insulin dependence over time, and improve patient outcomes.